So in the last video, I showed you how the report generator, the benefits of the report generator, but in this video, I wanna go into a little more detail into how it works and when it doesn't work uh, and, uh, and the different options available to you. So um, as we showed in the last one, you can use unsorted data uh, as, long as, it's, as long as the intervals exist and as long as the headings are pretty much representative of the categories you shouldn't have too much trouble. You don't want to use sorted data. Uh, so I know a lot of people chop up their um, their Excel sheets to for each category, the pendings, the actives, the pendings, and the salt. But in this case, you want to work with unsorted data. You're going to have the best results. Uh, once you start changing the the column data, like varying the column data, it's going it, to it won't work quite as well. It'll probably still work, but I make no guarantees. Anyway. Uh, so, so the way this works is when you pop open the chart or when you pop open the palette, it tries to associate category names or let's say row headings with the category that it's looking for. For instance, sold date in this MLS is closed date. Uh, this category or this drop down is only going to show you applicable fields. So only things that have dates in them are going to go in the date category. Um, and then, uh, so for the other categories, list price, sold price, it's looking for only numbered categories. So if you have a DOM in there and things are written like 1, uh, O, N, E, 2, T, W, O, which I've never seen before, it's not going to, it's not going to think those are numbers. So, so yeah, it works on almost any MLS, but it's foreseeable that it could break on some MLSs. Anyway, going forward, uh, so when it doesn't work, I'll show you one where it, it, it causes a problem. Uh, this is IRES, and uh, if any of you have used the IRES MLS, it gives you 70 fields worth of data. Uh, so when you click on the macro, it gives you a little warning. Uh, I had trouble associating the category names. What does that mean? It means it's missing something, list price. Now, the word price is the way that this MLS shows list price. Uh, and that's a little ambiguous, so the macro doesn't know what it's talking. It doesn't know that it's looking for. Uh, what it doesn't know what what category to associate with. So you just have to manually do it. Now going down, you'll see that square footage got associated with area. That was incorrect. It should actually be associated with total square footage. So it's it's not always right. It's right about as often as the exporter is correct in picking the VD names. 85% of the time it's right, 15% of the time it's horribly wrong and you'll have to fix it. So always keep your eye on that. Um, but I don't foresee there being too much trouble. You just have to, it's just, you just have to pay attention as well. Um, so let's see, generate report, did it without a problem once the categories were associated. So now say for instance I tried to run this with a blank field. Uh, now it says you need that field. So if you try to run it with these, with any of these three top categories blank, it's going to say, hey, I need those fields. But say you don't have DOM, for instance, Toronto, it doesn't really have DOM. Or I mean, it doesn't actually have square footage, not DOM. Uh, so say we left that blank, because it does come in looking for, it, it does come in with a field that kind of represents something, but approximate square footage isn't really applicable. It's got a hyphen in there. You can't really do math on those values. Most of them are blank anyway. So in this case, we can just throw this to blank. And for the sake of this uh, uh, demonstration, I'm going to just put DOM as blank too. So you can run it and it's not going to stop you. It's just going to say, hey, we couldn't make all the charts. We couldn't do all the analysis because we don't have all the data that we're looking for. But we did as much as we could. We tried. Um, now you'll also notice I'm going to pull this away from the, the little recording button, uh, that we have a new page called Sorted Data Report, uh, whereas the first page is just called Sheet 1. Sorted Data Report is going to just be a duplication of the first sheet that we were working with. 
And the reason I do this is because I actually have to sort the data, and if you guys had some kind of sorting going on, I wouldn't want to screw up your data on you. Uh, but you'll notice that there's big color coding, big highlighted fields now. Now these highlighted fields correspond with the interval that was just taken. So for instance, if I switch this to month to month, um, 12 months, hit go, insufficient data, whatever. Um, and I'm going to go back to this report field. You'll see all the lovely pastel colors highlighting the pieces of information closed in those dates. So for instance, sold date, we had four solds in, in, uh, in June. Now let's go take a look at our, our sheet. Mm, that's not the one. We had four sold in June, right there. All right, so we, so this way a lot it gives us a little bit of a check. So you're not just taking my word for it that I built this macro correctly. You can actually go and check. And I actually encourage you, at least in the first uh, the first month of testing this, that we do at least a little bit of diligence and check to make sure. Let's see, our average uh, sold price it's saying is 687 for May. Let's take a look and 687. All right, so so it is correct. I mean, obviously I've checked the heck out of this thing. But these MLSs, you know, they're crazy beasts and they change on us. So uh, so double check until you feel confident that this macro is actually working. Um, one, let's see, one other option available is snapshot. Snapshot is a little bit different Oh, I'm going to pick a different piece of data to work with for this explanation. So snapshot matches the current quarterly review that just came out, uh, this video being recorded uh, at the, the beginning of July 2015. And, and uh, this, this snapshot view is only going to show you little bits and pieces. It's not going to be a comparative ana analysis. It is just going to be... Um, just the stats for this specific interval. So for instance, this one started uh, January, ending in 6.30, uh, today's date, which is uh, June 30th. I lied a second ago at the beginning of July, saying it was the beginning of July. It is actually the end of June. Uh, so start date, end date. Let's just keep this simple. It does need to know the status, so it's got a couple extra fields that have to be filled in, and it does, and this you have to manually do is check what fields it's seeing at, or check what fields are associated with the under contracts and pending. So when we hit generate report, you'll see 59 homes listed in 2015. Keep this, in, keep in mind this is listed in 2015. This isn't only the homes listed. This window is only homes listed in 2015. Um, and then it's showing 27 homes under contract. So of all the data in this sheet, the under contracts and the pendings equaled 27 of those listings. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, things can go wrong, but if you keep your eye out, things really shouldn't go wrong. It's it's relatively, relatively easy to use. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Let's see if there's anything else I want to show you. Um, I think that's it. Oh, oh, one other thing is when you do build the when you build the regular stats and it has this uh, analysis over here on the right, you can and this is most likely the most confusing part of this macro, but you can change where it is what interval it's comparing to. So in this case, it's comparing June to May. Now, if we click on this category, we don't want to change anything in here uh, with it, with the keyboard. But if you click in the uh, the field, the, the data entry field or whatever Excel calls it, it's going to pop up this little blue box. And we can move this blue box to any of these, any of these top headings. And from there, it's going to generate these differences based on that. And now this can easily, easily go wrong, and I was debating not even putting it in, but I know that I'm going to find it useful, and I figure figure somebody else is going to find it useful too. So even though this is a very easily broken system, for instance, if this if this goes down to say the wrong category, stuff's going to go wrong. Um, 
So just keep that in mind. If you're if you're messing around with the uh, the analysis interval, just change it that way by clicking inside the box. I'm going to show you this one more time. Clicking inside the box, or click the box, click inside the entry field, and then move this box. A little confusing. Not too hard, though. And we deal with a lot of confusing stuff, so this surely shouldn't be too hard. Uh, I think that's it. I probably talked way too much, probably confused you more than uh, you would have if you didn't even have this explanation. Of course, if you have any questions, always available. Love talking about macro stuff. So if you have any ideas, anything you want added, you can do that too. All right, good luck.